Hello and welcome to another Nikopure Labs webinar. My name is Patricia Kovacevic and I'm the General Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer at Nikopure Labs. Today we are going to discuss a case study, namely how the United Kingdom implemented the Tobacco Products Directive. The United Kingdom was one of the first countries to implement um, in detail the requirements of the Tobacco Products Directive into their national law. Let's remind ourselves of the structure of European legislation. Um, I've shown you this slide in one of my previous webinars where we discussed the EU legal framework. So at the top, there are international and European treaties and agreements um, that um, basically are the basis for EU legislation that can be regulations, directives and decisions. Directives are not self-implementing. Thus, the Tobacco Products Directive requires member states to transpose the directive into national law by May 20th, 2016. The United Kingdom has done so a little bit earlier than that. Um, so at the bottom, you can see the national laws are actually the ones implementing the requirements of the directive. In the UK, um, basically, uh, the legislation has addressed several aspects of the Tobacco Products Directive um, in different ways. Today, we are not trying to um, basically discuss every single aspect of that implementation. That would be obviously much more time consuming than the time we have for the webinar. I would, however, like to provide you with some links and some direction as to where to find information about the pre-market notification of vapor products in the UK. The registration in the UK for online sales to consumers. It's not B2B sales, only sale to consumers. Also, where to find information about permissible e-cigarette advertising in the United Kingdom and other comprehensive regulatory resources from www.gov.uk. So let's talk about the pre-market notification. Um, recently, the UK government has provided an update on the European Union central entry gate for the pre-market notification. As some of you may know, um, as of the date of uh, recording this webinar, unfortunately the online tool is not fully functional and therefore um, the um, countries that need to receive the notification, of course at this time, do not have the ability to do so. The pre-market notification is due by November 19th for products that were on the market as of May 20th, 2016. That is November 19, 2016, of course. The European Commission is updating their website with information about um, what the notification has to contain, as well as um, other, other practical information for manufacturers. Um, that information can be found on the European Commission website. The UK government does not receive the notification um, itself and, and no does, uh, not does any other uh, government in the EU. Rather, uh, the EU has come up with a central entry gate, this online tool that I was referring to. And the central entry gate then will distribute information to member states about vapor products notified by manufacturers or by importers. The instructions really are, are um, um, available and are relevant mostly to companies that are um, ready to make notifications at this time. We fully expect that the online tool will be, will be fu fully func functional in the near future. Also, um, please note that either a manufacturer or an importer may submit a notification using the central entry gate and uh, that the retailers do not need to do so if the retailers are not, are not also manufacturers. Um, if the manufacturer has notified a product through the central entry gate, the importer of that same product doesn't have to do it uh, as well. So uh, we don't need redundant notifications. The uh, pre-market notification, of course, as you may remember, uh, in includes information about ingredients, about the product structure, about the name of the product, the countries that the manufacturer intends to sell the product to, um, as well as other information about the toxicological um, va um, values or toxicological properties, I should say, of the ingredients, um, and some uh, vapor uh, toxicology as well, or vapor analytical uh, as well. The um, retailers in the UK have until May 20th, 2017, to sell through stock that is not compliant with the labeling and product specification requirements of the Tobacco Products Directive. Therefore, in sum, um, the 
Pre-market notification in the UK is really described by reference to the online tool, the Central Entry Gate, that will be shortly available, and also to the provisions of the Tobacco Products Directive that specify what should this pre-market notification contain. Further, um, the UK is one of the few countries in Europe that actually envisages online sales to consumers. Please note that several other countries um, in Europe that have implemented the Tobacco Products Directive have specifically banned online sales. The UK is um, one of the countries that specifically allows online sales into the UK to UK consumers. Um, and therefore, uh, the UK has um, published their registration requirements for cross-border sales to consumers. Um, under um, UK regulation from May 20th, 2016 onwards, um, a retailer, an online retailer must be registered for online sales in order to supply tobacco products or electronic cigarettes and other vapor products via cross-border distance sales, for example, online sales into the UK to consumers. This applies to uh, businesses established in the UK selling tobacco products and or electronic cigarettes to consumers in, other, in another European um, economic area state, which comprises of the 28 EU member states plus um, Liechtenstein, Iceland and Norway. However, beware, even if the registration in the UK applies to online retailers, if the country to which you sell um, as a UK online retailer does not allow online sales, you need to verify that before you actually ship product to consumers in such countries, because if online sales are banned in another EU member state, the fact that the UK allows online sales doesn't really help you. Therefore, you need to be compliant both with the laws of the country where you reside as an online retailer, as well as with the, with the laws of the country uh, where your consumers, your ultimate um, buyers uh, really reside. Also, the online um, sales registration applies to businesses established in the economic, um, European economic area or in a third country such as the United States, selling directly to UK consumers. Thus, Nicobeer Labs has registered for online sales to UK consumers as soon as that registration was available, which in fact is available on the UK government website. Um, it's a link, it's a very uh, very brief registration. It asks only a few, um, a few questions about the company um, and uh, it's relatively straightforward. If you haven't done so, I encourage you to, to do it as soon as practicable. The um, other area that um, we will be talking about very briefly is electronic cigarette advertising. As you know, the Tobacco Products Directive specifies prohibitions against um, different types of um, advertising that relies on um, um, basically um, internet and other um, what, what's called information society uh, media. And um, it also prohibits sponsorships and other uh, advertising activities that have a cross-border effect. However, the Tobacco Products Directive allows countries uh, sufficient latitude with respect to point of sale or in-country advertising that doesn't use um, the information society media. Thus, um, in the UK, the government has actually decided to allow point of sale advertising and to allow posters and other type of advertising that does not have a cross-border effect, such as advertising on the side of the buses or even posters at the entrance of a cinema, although, for instance, cinema advertising or product placement or broadcast um, is prohibited. Thus, um, the um, Department of Health has published guidance on the e-cigarette advertising provisions um, of the um, Tobacco and Related Products Regulations of 2016. This is the Implementing Act in the UK. And um, it actually has quite detailed explanations, including a very helpful table that outlines what is permitted and what is prohibited under this new regulation. Uh, it is also expected that the Committee of Advertising Practices, CAP, um, which is really a non-government advertising body in the UK, will also um, issue a consultation and further uh, detailed guidance in the future on um, the types of electronic cigarette advertising that are permissible. Um, CAP, the Committee of Advertising Practices, in fact, has issued previous guidance before the Tobacco Products Directive was implemented into UK law um, that at the time suggested that certain types of advertising were permissible that currently are not anymore. So therefore, the um, 
Committee of Advertising Practices um, um, standards that were published in the previous years, again, um, need to be revised to become uh, compliant, of course, with the new regulation. So in brief, the government guidance includes the summary table I mentioned of advertising requirements. Um, just to summarize that, and again, I always encourage you to understand that, that our webinars are just for information purposes and you should really go and, and look in detail at the various statutes and regulations in order to, um, to inform your business. Um, but in brief, um, what is going to be prohibited in advertising is going to be broadcast, broadcast media advertising, including internet, print media, SMS and email, as well as any sponsorship with cross-border effect. Um, B2B communication is permitted, therefore if you have an um, online uh, retail site or um, some other uh, communication tool with your business that may include internet and email that are not accessible to consumers, of course you may continue to do so, as long as again those are not directed or accessible to consumers. Factual information and factual how-to videos on a company website, on a manufacturer's website, are also permitted, as well as on retailer sites, so that could theoretically include um, a video about how to um, refill your container. Um, of course, this needs to be further elaborated um, and we will see how the UK will enforce this requirement, or I should say this, um, uh, this possibility. Um, also, non-compensated social media, non-paid for reviews um, of uh, the product are um, allowed as long as, again, those are non-compensated. So bloggers that voluntarily review product um, appear to be um, allowed according to the guidance. Outdoor po posters, leaflets, direct hard copy mail, as well as point of sale advertising are also permitted in the UK. One of the examples that I gave um, was the advertising on the side of a bus that does not leave the United Kingdom. Also bear in mind with respect to retailer registration that um, in the UK there is um, um, of course different legislation that may be applicable in Scotland um, and different that may be applicable in England and Wales with respect to actual um, I should say brick and mortar retailer registration and you should check um, the applicability of, of such uh, statutes as well if, if those exist. Um, this is beyond the scope of our webinar. Here we're just discussing the implementation of the Tobacco Products Directive uh, by the UK at national level. The um, UK, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, www.gov.uk website has extremely helpful information, general information about um, the regulation that the government of the United Kingdom has adopted to implement the Tobacco Products Directive. Thus, um, the UK Tobacco and Related Products Regulation 2016 was brought before Parliament on April 22nd, 2016. And this is, again, the regulation that implements the Tobacco Products Directive in the UK. The text of it, as well as um, some other very helpful tools, are on the uh, UK government website. Um, I must say, from my experience, um, and also having interacted with the government and with the MHRA, the Medicines and uh, Healthcare Regulatory Agency of the UK, that um, they're uh, one of the most responsive um, bodies um, in the world, uh, honestly, according to my experience. Um, at least uh, you get some answers when you ask, and um, therefore I believe um, it, it, it is helpful to, to try to reach out to them if you need further clarification on, on any of these aspects. Just some other features of the um, www.gov.uk website. Um, the website includes um, detailed information and guidance for retailers and manufacturers. Um, the one feature that I found very useful in communicated with my business um, partners uh, here at Nika Pure Labs um, was a schematic, a chart, on the various deadlines that are applicable to the, um, uh, to the importation or say manufacturing and distribution of products that may not be compliant with the tobacco products directive. Thus um, the um, UK foresees of course that product can still be manufactured until November 20th 2017 and non-compliant product um, can still be sold uh, until May 20th, I'm sorry, November 
19th, 2016, and it can be sold until May 20th, 2017. So let me please repeat that. Apologies for the confusion. Um, so um, non-compliant product can still be manufactured and placed on the market until November 19th, 2016, and the retailers have until May 20th, 2017 to sell the non-compliant product. Um, and of course, the pre-market notification is due by November 19th, 2016 for products on the market on May 20th. Um, the UK is one of the few countries that has also foreseen um, what should happen during the interim period between May 20th, 2016 and November 19th, 2016 with respect to the pre-market notification. Thus, um, the UK has advised that um, any substantial changes to a product that was on the market as of May 20th, 2016, and that are made between May 20th and November 19th can be notified and the product can be changed, provided that the notification is filed at least one day ahead of um, placing such modified product on the market. Same with new introductions of products on the market during the period of time May 20th, November 19th, 2016. Um, the UK legislation, um, according to the guidance, provides that, in fact, those can be notified one day before placement on the market. Of course, um, later on, um, there is a six month waiting period, therefore, one needs to um, notify the product and wait six months until um, the time such product is placed on the market. Um, just um, to, um, to summarize our discussion, the UK is a good case study of, of what I believe it's a reasonably transparent implementation of the Tobacco Products Directive. While we may not necessarily agree with the provisions of the Tobacco Products Directive, and of course uh, we know they're extremely burdensome, including the pre-market notification, uh, from our experience um, with uh, a lot of diligence, a lot of work, they can be complied with easily. It helps very much when a government such as uh, the government of the United Kingdom provides ample guidance and time to the retailers and manufacturers operating in that jurisdiction to be able to comply with the, uh, with the law. Unfortunately, we have seen that some other EU countries have not even transposed the Tobacco Products Directive within the May 20th, 2016 deadline, which of course creates um, a lot of uncertainty for businesses. Um, that concludes today's webinar. We're looking forward um, to um, sharing our knowledge with you in future webinars. As always, thank you for your attention and have a great day.